Welcome back everybody for another video. Today I'm going to be talking about the seven things that I learned from making over a million dollars day trading. So number one, trading is hard. Everybody thinks that they get just get into trading, open up a brokerage account, right? Uh, place a couple trades and they're going to become millionaires overnight. But the reality is that's really far from the truth. Uh, I think most people want to believe that they can just, you know, kind of come into the markets learn a little bit, study a little bit, and then three months later, they're going to be profitable forever. And I thought the same. Um, and not only that, but trading really brings out the best and the worst in people just because it plays off of psychology so much. Your greed, your fear, uh, if you're unhappy with your personal life, whatever the case is, it's going to affect your trading performance. And let's be honest, um, we're using trading as a vehicle to escape the lifestyle that we're currently in. We want to improve the lifestyles that we are currently in through trading, right? Because it's a endeavor that doesn't take up a whole lot of time, uh, physically or mentally, if you, unless you let it, right? You can obviously uh, let these markets, you know, take over your life. You can become a vampire, you know, you can put in hundreds or thousands of hours of study, but there's no guarantee of you actually turning a profit in the markets, right? And once you go down that path, maybe some of you guys might have beginner's luck or you might blow up a couple accounts. You're going to realize like this requires much more dedication, much more commitment. And overall, it's going to require you to look in the mirror and really question your personality. Some of your flaws that you have are not built for trading. For me personally, I'm impulsive, so I had a really hard time with revenge trading or over trading just because I thought that the next trade was going to be the winner. And that's something that some of you guys might be battling with right now. It's something that I battled with for a long time, and I have to make sure that I'm constantly on my toes so I don't make those same mistakes. And I know that some of you guys don't know what your flaws are, don't know what your weaknesses are. And this is why trading is so hard because you have to, you have to look yourself in the mirror and face those hard truths. You have to tell yourself, I'm a gambler or I'm greedy or I'm fearful. And a lot of people are just not comfortable doing that. It comes down to you looking in the mirror and saying, these are all the flaws that are holding me back, which most people are not comfortable doing, right? We're not comfortable with change. We're not comfortable with accepting our personalities as they are. So in order for you to change, how can you be uh, putting yourself in a state of growth if you're not willing to be honest with yourselves, right? And I see a lot of it on Twitter. I think there's a lot of people who are just not being honest with themselves as far as trading with money they can't afford to lose or being in a financial position that they can actually take advantage of the markets and not be uh, driven by the emotional side of things. Because if you're trading from a place of desperation, it's going to make things much harder. So again, trading is not easy, no matter what you guys see on social media. Uh, this is an endeavor that I believe takes at least two or three years for you to actually become profitable. Now that requires you to put in dedicated hours of study, dedicated hours of time on the charts, dedicated hours of journaling, self-reflection, all the above essentially. Uh, and you know, it just requires a lot of hours that not a lot of people are willing to commit to. But I will say, if you do commit to them, right, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So the only reason why I kept going, you know, over the course of eight years was because I knew at the end of the tunnel was a lifestyle that I always wanted. Something that allowed me freedom, something that I didn't have to clock in or do whatever it was that, a, you know, somebody was telling me to do uh, for a small amount of money. And in my opinion, what I was doing, uh, I always wanted to make more. I always wanted to earn more. But at the end of the day, that's not up to me. I can't control how much I make. To a certain extent, yes. But really, it comes down to, you know, the front office, whoever I was working for, uh, HR. So my future was actually in their hands. And I didn't, I didn't like that at all. I wanted to have control over my income. And with trading, there's an unlimited income ceiling, right? as much as you want to make or as little as you want to make it's scalable both ways and you don't have a boss right you have extremely flexible hours you can trade whatever markets you want in the world as long as they're active during those specific time periods but 
because there's so much easy access, that's kind of what makes trading so hard is that you're getting the brightest minds that are competing in the space. You're getting the retail trader that has, a, has that is working harder than you. You're, you're getting everybody in the world that is trying to make a dollar. That's who you're competing against. So if you think that's going to be a cakewalk, you know, I got a, a news flash for you. It's not right. Trading is extremely difficult, but I will say if you stick to your processes, you stick to the routines and you're just focused on growth rather than money, I guarantee you by the end of your journey, you're going to be satisfied with you not giving up on this and putting yourself in a position of success. So number two, wise men say fools rush in. Now, what do I mean by that? I think when everybody gets into the market, they think that they know more than they actually do. And it's really an ego thing. And you, you see it a lot with ICT traders in, in particular. And now I'm in the ICT camp, but I'm not as egotistical as some of these guys are. They think that they know everything about the market. They know every single move that's going to happen in the market. And the reality is that nobody does. <laughs> All right. There's a level of uncertainty that nobody can really explain because we're not huge players in the market. So when it comes to education in the market, you have to understand that when you're getting into the game, you have to make sure that you understand where you are in your trading journey. Like most people think that they can just study a trading course or, or listen to some psychology without the without putting the reps in. Now all of a sudden when they go into the market, they have no idea what they're doing. Right? It's the same thing with um sports, right? There's a lot of people that want to become full-time couch coaches, right? They're just on the sidelines. They have no idea what is going on with the game and they think that they know what's going on and it's just foolish, right? In order for you to become a profitable trader, you have to get your hands dirty. And what does that mean? You actually have to get in the market and get reps in, right? Placing those trades in the market, executing on your ideas, creating your own ideas, right? If you're, if you're foolish, you're going to look at other people, other people for their biases, and you're not going to be able to generate your own ideas in the market. So for me, I really rely on my own ideas. So if I'm going to create a bias or I'm going to create a narrative, I'm not looking at other people's posts or headlines or news or anything like that to generate my bias because I want to become an independent thinker. And I think the wisest people in the market have that independent thought process. They're not relying on outside sources to generate their trading ideas. If they have a source of information that can help give confluence to their ideas, then great, right? But they still have to formulate a thesis around that specific trade. They're not just blindly taking that trade and going into the market and, and executing based on that. So if you feel like you're foolish, it may be, maybe it's because you are. You don't have enough education, you don't have enough reps in the market, and you don't understand your psychology enough. So all these things take time. All right, so you cannot rush into the process of learning. And when I'm talking about learning in the markets, it really comes to experience. There's no shortcut to experience. I've been trading the markets over 10 years. And if you guys were to try and catch up to me, there's no possible way that you could. You just have to put the reps in. You have to be in front of the screens. You have to understand the global economic climate that we're in. And those are the different market cycles that you're going to have to participate in. And there's just no shortcut around that. Even backtesting is not going to give you uh, the right experience when it comes to analyzing a live market because it's all hindsight. Yes, you can go back and say, oh, this happened or that that happened. But when it comes to analyzing a market live and executing in a market live, it's a completely different story. And that's something that we cannot pass down to you as educators or as content creators. You have to get your hands dirty and actually trade and back test and journal your thought processes. And there's no shortcut to it. I can't journal for you. I can't place the trades for you. I can't help you with your psychology. That's all internal. And it's something that I can guide you on. But at the end of the day, you have to put in the work just like I did. So number three, money is hard to make if you're desperate for it. Right. And I know a lot of people out there are probably going to get angry at this, but I know that the majority of you or many of you are probably trading with money that you cannot afford to lose. And I just see it really based on emotional comments that I see online, Twitter, for example, YouTube. There's a lot of people out there that are just trading with money that they cannot afford to lose. I get DMs all the time, people begging for money, whatever the case is, or they think that trading is going to change their life. Well, really, you have to make sure that your life is in order first before you start trading. 
I know because I was in that position as well. I was the guy delivering pizza. I was the guy bagging groceries. I was the guy that barely had a college education. I had to get my life in order for me to progress to chase after my trading goals. When I first got into trading, I was a college dropout. I didn't have any money to my name. I was on unemployment. So what did I have to do? I had to look at my future and say, all right, if I don't go back to college, what's my life going to look like? I was possibly going to be stuck delivering pizza or unemployed for the rest of my life. And that's not something that I wanted to do. So my first step was to go back to school for business administration and finance. I didn't get into finance. Uh, I wanted to go into prop, but unfortunately the path was not there for me. So I ended up in construction. I had no qualms about it because it was paying me a decent salary and I had to work my way up. But even through working my way up in that ladder, I was still pretty desperate for money. I'm not going to lie. Like when I came out of college, I was only making 40, 42,000, I think. And after taxes, it's not a whole lot of money, right? When you're 20, you know, mid twenties, uh, graduating from college, I had a late start, right? I didn't graduate when I should have on time because I wasted some years. So I had a late start in my career and you know, I was spiteful of that because my friend got me into construction and he was making way more and he didn't have a college education. So at the time, yes, I was desperate for money and I, I was desperate to make trading work for me. And the more I tried and the more I tried to chase trading success, the further it went away, away from me. So if you're listening to this and you're in a hard place financially, you have to look at your life and say, what is the priority right now? Is it actually my trading or am I trying to make trading my lottery ticket, right? You're looking at trading as your ticket out of your, your lifestyle right now or into a new lifestyle that you hope to have. But the harsh reality is, and you have to ask yourself this question is, am I actually setting myself up for success? And when I really started seeing success was when I didn't need the money. And it's crazy to think like this, but you're not going to get money from trading. You have to get money in other areas of your life, different income sources. Maybe it's from your job. There's nothing wrong with staying in your job and building that nest egg because then it relieves all the pressure that you have from trading. I know there's a lot of traders out there and even in the prop model that they're spending all their money on these challenges when they don't either have the skill set or the nest egg to be able to do that. You have to have both. All right. So, build the skill set first, then build the nest egg, and then go into a prop challenge. Don't do it the other way around. A lot of you guys are using prop challenges as your way out. That's not the correct way to do it. And I know if you're feeling desperate, if you're feeling down about your situation, it's going to highly impact your trading performance. And if you don't believe me, you know, drop a comment below if you, if you can relate to this, because I was in that same position. If I was desperate for money, my trading performance was not where it should have been because I was thinking about the outcome more than the process. All right, so if you're in that position, make sure you're setting yourself up for success and really analyzing your life and, and figuring out what you need to do to put yourself in a position where you're not desperate for money anymore, right? Maybe it's, maybe you have to stop partying on the weekends. Maybe you have to start saving more. Maybe you have to say no to all those vacations that you were planning in the future. And for me, I didn't travel internationally until I turned 33. Like my first time abroad was last year. So I know what it's like to sacrifice, you know, uh, lifestyle. I know what it's like to sacrifice time on the weekends. I know what it's like to sacrifice buying nice things for myself. I mean, I was driving a Honda Accord that had 350,000 miles on it. No AC. The driver's side window was the only window that rolled down and the headliner was sagging. Like I was driving that thing to the ground uh, because I was trying to save all my money. I didn't see that I was in a position to buy myself a new car or go on lavish vacations with my friends, whatever the case is, you have to delay that gratification for later if you want trading success because you cannot be desperate for money in this game, trust me. So number four, the gap between where you are and where you wanna be is discipline, focus, and consistency. So first of all, you cannot be erratic in your process. You can't say, I'm gonna study this week and then next week drop off. You have to be consistent you have to be disciplined when it comes to your process because i'm just telling you from my personal experience i went through eight years of trial and error and not only that i would come into the markets right get really focused get really consistent for a short period of time maybe it was two three months blow up my account and then take a break for two three months right that to me is not consistency 
I would have saved myself so much time and so much heartache and pain if I just stuck to the process. That's managing my risk appropriately. That way I can actually learn and not be so emotional about the outcome. And when it comes to discipline and consistency, you just have to do it even when you don't want to. So I know that the hardest thing in trading is to journal your trades. I know if you're listening to this, you're probably like, ah, oh, I have journal, I have trades to journal today. But the thing is, if you don't do it today, right, you're gonna push it off till tomorrow. Now, let's say you take a trade tomorrow, you have to catch up on yesterday and today. So you're actually adding work to yourself by not staying consistent, not being disciplined. Now, when it comes to discipline, it also relates to trade frequency, trade frequency and risk management. So both those things have a huge impact on your trading performance. I found that if I were just reduced my trade frequency, I actually had to stick to that. Now, that's where discipline comes in. If I say I'm going to take two or three trades and I found myself taking five or six, you all of a sudden know that you're not being disciplined on a week in, week out basis. So when it comes to actually analyzing your performance, you have to look at everything that you're doing, not just your trade setups. That's just one piece of the puzzle. You know, are you eating healthy? Are you getting enough exercise? Are you going to sleep on time? Are you journaling your trades? Are you studying when you need to study on during off hours? Are you back testing when you need to back test? And it's not easy, right? There's some days where you're just going to chalk up and, and say that this is a loss and I'm not going to do it today. But you have to make sure that if you take that rest day, that one day, that you're back on the horse and you're going after it the following days. Don't take long sustained breaks like I did. Sometimes I would take two, three month breaks from trading because I was so burnt out. I was so focused on the the results that I just lost sight of the process. So what you have to do is just detach yourself from the outcome or, or from the, the desired result and just stick to the process day in, day out, no matter how, how hard it gets and, and how uh, tedious it can become. Because you're going to go through this process of staying disciplined throughout your training career or, tr you know, even if you're going through a rough patch, you're going to have this these thoughts that come into your head and, and you're going to think, you know, why am I doing all this? I'm not even getting any results, right? But that's not what you should be measuring your success by. It's, did I follow my process? Did I follow my routine this week? And I guarantee you in 12 months, 24 months, you're going to see amazing results because you stuck to that process through the hard, through the hard times, right? Through those rough periods where you didn't want to do something. Um, and just in, in general, sticking to that same consistent routine, you're going to find that your growth is going to uh, increase exponentially once you hit that point of profit profitability. So number five, adaptation is vital to longevity. Now, what do I mean by adapt? So when it comes to adapting, the biggest thing that I think sticks out to me on my journey to making seven figures as a trader was I actually had to adapt my personality. I think that was the biggest driving factor in my success. And what I think is going to be a, the biggest driving factor in all of your success as well is understanding what are your biggest personality flaws, right? You have to understand, you know, what's really holding you back. And a lot of times that's a hard discussion to have and adaptation in general, you know, it's not something that we're comfortable with. Once you were stuck in our ways, we, we get really comfortable. We, you know, that really becomes our identity. And when it comes to changing your identity, right, that's not something that happens overnight. You can't just say, I'm impulsive today. I'm not going to be impulsive tomorrow. That's something that you have to actually have to be mindful of on a day in, day out basis and actually work towards. So let's just say as an example that you're greedy and you don't want to admit that you're greedy, but you are. What does that look like in your trading? You have these massive runners or you're over leveraged and you have these huge trades that maybe go in your favor or against you and you take a loss. What is the first thing that you're possibly going to do? You might blame the market, right? But in reality, you should be blaming yourself because you're greedy, right? The market's not greedy. The market doesn't have any emotions. So when it comes to adaptation, right, this is a hard thing to do is because you have to admit that you're greedy first and how many people are willing to admit that they're something when they think that they're not. So you have to be honest with yourself and in order for you to adapt and improve or change, 
it requires you to actually be honest with yourself. And that's a hard pill to swallow because we all have demons. We all have things that we're fighting. But unless you're really honest with yourself and can understand that these specific character traits are actually holding you back in your trading, you're never going to be able to improve. So being honest with yourself is the fastest way that you can adapt. So there's adaptation when it comes to personality traits, but then there's also adaptation when it comes to markets themselves. Now, a lot of you guys have seen me transition from Forex to futures, and that's because there's a lot of regulatory issues right now or regulatory gray areas when it comes to Forex firms operating in the US. So if I need to adapt, I'm just gonna start trading futures, right? Futures are regulated in the US. There's not as many issues, and that's just me pivoting and being able to accept the change that is necessary for me to keep, continue operating in the markets as a full-time trader. Now, that's not to mean that I'm not gonna trade Forex in my personal accounts. It just means I'm not gonna be trading prop, uh, Forex prop, unless things become a little bit more clear. So when it comes to adapting in the markets, you have to just be nimble. You have to be able to pivot whenever you need to. Uh, maybe a certain time frame is not working for you. Maybe can market conditions change. Maybe there's a different narrative in a different market, right? You have to be able to go into a different market that might be moving more so than some other markets. So learning how to adapt really comes from having an open mind and being creative. And I think if you're more creative, it's easier for you to adapt because you're more open to different possibilities. So number six is get comfortable being uncomfortable. Now, everybody watching this video should know what I'm talking about. Whether you're placing your first trade or your hundredth trade, there's a level of uncertainty that you just have to get accustomed to in the markets. It's, it really puts you in uncomfortable positions all the time because you have to learn how to manage your emotions while you're in the trade as well. So every time you scale up or every time you're on a losing streak, you're gonna be faced with adversity. You're gonna feel uncomfortable placing that next trade or you're gonna un feel uncomfortable as you're sizing up your accounts, right? So if you're only used to risking say $100 on your trade and then you move to $200, it's gonna feel uncomfortable, right? That's just your mind. Uh, you're pushing the boundary in your mind your mental capacity as far as uh, handling that risk, right? And, you know, when, when you're trying to hit the level that I've hit in trading, you don't automatically go overnight from $100 trades to 5K trades, right? That's, it's, I would say it's highly uh, improbable unless you're used to dealing with that level of money. For me, I was only able to learn how to deal with that level of uh, risk because of my career. Right. I actually was in high end, high end residential construction. And when I started seeing budgets, you know, people were spending $15,000 on a kitchen faucet. Um, it became much easier to comprehend the level of risk that I was taking, but that's maybe not your journey. So when you're getting comfortable being uncomfortable, you have to slowly take those steps. You can't go from again, $100 trades to 5k trades overnight. It just doesn't happen. And it's really about uh, it's very similar to lifting weight. If you're only comfortable lifting 50 pounds in the gym, let's say you're comfortable bench pressing 50 pounds, right? How do you go from 50 to 200 overnight? It's the same thing. You have to learn how to become, uh, become comfortable at each incremental step. And you can't take huge bites and say, I'm going to, you know, size up two times next month because you're going to feel yourself mentally be uncomfortable with that. And it's about training yourself. It's about training your mental capacity. It's about training yourself when it comes to managing those emotions in the trade, which is why I'm a big advocate of actually writing down how you feel in a trade more so than the statistics behind the trade, because I think that the emotional factor plays a much bigger role in your trading performance than most people think. So if I had tips for you to get comfortable being uncomfortable, it's just get those reps in, uh, understand where you are financially and, and, what level of risk you're comfortable with because I know a lot of people are trading you guys are trading in, in a in a window that is intolerable like you guys are trading way too big you're trading way too frequently and it's making you uncomfortable and you cannot learn from those experiences because just from me uh, as a lesson that I le had to learn was you know if I was uncomfortable taking a loss I found myself over trading so what did that lead to it led to more work because now I had to go back and try and journal all those trades. But how can you possibly learn if you're not going to journal all the trades? I find that if you find yourself over trading, now you're creating work for yourself on the back end and you're never going to be willing to actually accept the losses for what they are 
because you have so much work on your plate that you just say, ah, oh, I'm not going to journal today. I'm going to scratch it up as a loss. But you really, you have to just be comfortable journaling those uncomfortable trades because at the end of the day, you're making a mistake and you have to own it, right? So finally, number seven, slow is smooth and smooth is fast. Let's say if you're finding consistency and you're finding some profitability, the last thing that you want to do is over start over leveraging and, and over trading. You want to take things nice and slow and don't rush the process. I know once some of you guys start finding a little bit of, of consistency or profitability, you try and scale up way too fast. And that's something that I had to deal with as well. And it, it kept me from actually growing in a nice, consistent manner. Like I would get extremely overconfident and then I would blow up. I would get extremely overconfident and then blow up. And then I would be really down about myself and down about trading and then just take a break entirely. So I think the biggest thing is to just aim for small base hits and not go for those home run trades. Everybody wants to turn their 5K into 25K, 50K overnight. And that's just not realistic. You have to just put things into perspective, aim for low hanging fruit and not try and get too crazy. Because I know that if you start oversizing, you start over trading, your emotional volatility is going to kick up a notch, right? And if your emotional volatility kicks up a notch, now all of a sudden your edge becomes dull because you're going to start making poor decisions and your judgment is going to be clouded. So as a tip, make sure you're measuring your emotional volatility as you're going through your winning and losing streaks, because the worst thing that you could possibly have happen is letting your emotions take over and then have your emotions make the decisions for you. You want to be in a clear state of mind where you're consistently increasing that equity curve, but not getting too crazy where you feel overconfident. You want to go for the home run and then you just wipe out all the gains that you worked so hard for over the course of a week or a month, whatever the case is. All right. So if you're struggling with that, make sure if you're going to scale up that you're doing it slowly. Again, it comes back to the, the weightlifting thing. If you're only comfortable lifting a certain weight, you cannot jump you can't take those huge, massive leaps to the next level. Just take it slow and jot down your thoughts, jot down your emotions as you increase or as you scale up, right? And as you get bigger in your trading, your sizes increase, maybe your emotions increase as well. And that's at that point, maybe you should dial back and, and get more comfortable at that previous position size because, you know, as you scale up, things get much harder. You know, the game is never ending. You think that once you become profitable, that's it, you know, but as you hit different levels, the game is the same. You're going to face those same emotional demons that come out of the closet and say, you know, oversize on this trade. You got this next one. And that's the last thing that you want to do. Or you took, you took two losses in a row, size up to make them back. You know, those are the little devils on your shoulder that are telling you to do these different things because that's going to get you back on track. But when in reality, it's putting you further off track. So the only thing that is going to keep you consistent throughout that, that long-term process and the long-term growth is by making sure that you're growing slowly and healthy, right? Because uh, you've seen it with businesses. If they grow too fast, they fail, right? Because they don't have the process in place to sustain that growth. So in order for you to be around for the long-term, you want to make sure that you're not getting too far ahead of yourself. You're not letting your emotions take over. You're just going to sit down follow the process day in, day out. And eventually you're going to get to that goal, right? When I first started my prop trading journey, I didn't know when I was going to make a million dollars. I didn't even have a goal of making a million dollars. I just wanted to focus on trading properly and I'll get paid out, right? Because if you set goals like that, it's going to really hinder your, your performance because now you're chasing trades. You're, you're not positioning properly. Your risk management is terrible. And the list, you know, it's a laundry list of issues that you're going to face because you're chasing these specific goals. So never have, I never have a monthly performance target. I never have a yearly performance target. I just plan on coming to the market, operating week in, week out, day in, day out with the same process and let the chips fall how they may, right? So I hope you guys found this video useful. I know for me, it was a long journey to try and hit seven figures and even six figures. I think most of you guys, if you're trying to hit a specific target, you have to understand that it's going to be a process. It doesn't come as fast as you think it might. You know, it took me eight years even if, to become a little bit profitable. And I hope anybody listening to this video can shortcut that process and not go through the pain that I felt and actually listen to what I'm telling you guys because I went through the same issues that you're facing right now.
So if you guys enjoyed this video and learned something, hit like, leave a comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey. Yeah, let's see how you do under pressure. Oh. Yeah, I've been wanting this shit forever. I've been